3D environments are a great way to visualise an imaginary world. Video games often use 3D environments to create such a world that aligns with their concepts. It features many different geometric components and meshes that combine to form an environment that can be stunning, realistic, in-depth or stylish. These components are primitive and constructive solid geometry, terrain, materials, shaders, lighting, shadows, sound, animation, particles, physics and triggers. Each component can be used in different ways to achieve a certain effect, whether that be a specific tone or make the player feel some form of emotion. Well thought out and executed 3D environments can drastically improve a game's visual style and gameplay feel in many scenarios and also allows for your game's world to stay memorable through the player's eyes. This technical manual hopes to analyse different components that make up a 3D environment and show good and bad examples of these components. Primitive Solid Geometry and Constructive Solid Geometry, here onwards referred to as PSG and CSG respectively, are two different forms of structure that make up an object within the environment. Any object that is not part of the main terrain will be built using either one of these methods. PSG involves the use of basic primitives that can be found within a 3D modelling software. Some common primitives you may come across are boxes, spheres, pyramids, cylinders or a teapot. These primitives would then be changed using a variety of different modelling techniques to create an object within a scene. On the other hand, CSG combines multiple primitives together to form a single object. This can be done by merging primitives together or removing geometry from a primitive using a different primitive as a selection tool. This structure style is better at creating more advanced shapes or achieving certain effects such as creating holes in objects or engraving on a deeper level than a simple bump or normal map. PSG has no real example since there will be many objects in every environment and CSG's only purpose is to more easily create objects that could be done a lot longer with PSG. The real value of PSG and CSG comes from the methods of an object's modelling and the detail that is put into them. Terrain is the main landscape that makes up the ground of a 3D environment. This could be made out of a digital mesh that can be built upon and changed or specific objects with their own pre-made collision. In most scenarios, it is usually a combination of the two to allow both natural environments and solid structures to coexist. By using a digital mesh, a game engine such as Unreal can generate a landscape and collision based off changes made to the mesh. This can be done by sculpting and painting over it using a variety of tools. Solid structures are used for any features of the landscape that extend past the built mesh. This can range from changes in a rock formation, natural foliage, trees, water, or structures like bridges, certain paths, or even buildings. Creating a detailed digital mesh to mimic landscapes that you may find in real life can help build upon the immersion of an environment to the player by showing them that they are currently in a natural world, rather than a built level. The inclusion of solid structures upon the existing mesh bring detail to the environment and creative placement helps to further build on the world immersion. Extensive terrain can usually be found in large open world games, usually RPGs. Star Wars Battlefront 2 developed by EA in 2017, as you may know, was completely torn apart for its outrageous use of microtransactions. The game became free for PC and Xbox during January 2021 and in the future for PlayStation in June 2021. Despite the gameplay issues, the terrain of the different locations you can visit look great with appropriate placement of objects and foliage that helps build the immersion of the different Star Wars planets. Some particularly good looking terrain can be found on the forested planets of Endor and Yavin 4, where the landscape painting and foliage components really shine. A less realistic looking game that features beautiful terrain is obviously Breath of the Wild from Nintendo. Winning Game of the Year in 2017, the game was universally praised for its rich and stunning environments, from the vast snow-covered mountains to its calm and wide plains. However, though the game's terrain was thoroughly thought out and perfectly executed, the frame rate has a habit of dropping in areas with a high density of terrain elements. The Akala region, and Korok Forest in particular, can turn your game into a slideshow with the amount of foliage in place, combined with other elements such as cell shading or particle effects. In order to create believable terrain, you must plan the layout of the environment ahead of time, 
and factor in other components such as lighting to make sure your scene is effectively shown. Materials are the main component that is used to bring colour to your models. They are made up of a combination of textures, maps and parameters that can affect how the material reacts to other components such as lighting. Common assets used in a material are diffuse maps, opacity maps, bump slash normal maps or scalar values that control the material's roughness, metallicness or specularity. More information on textures and map types will be shown at the timestamp on screen right now. Shaders are advanced algorithms that have the ability to change a model's structure and its material's colour through certain actions in real time. For example, a wave shader might be used to make a pool of water seem more natural by slowly rippling the vertices on the surface of the water's model. <coughs> Using materials and shaders together can create different outcomes based on the visual style of your environment. One such game with a clear visual style is Cyberpunk 2077. This game has an interesting example of materials and shaders since they are both good and horrific. If you are playing on a powerful PC or a newer console like the PS5, the game's detailed materials and lighting shaders does a good job at representing the cyberpunk themes through the grime of the city. If you are playing on the previous generation of consoles like the PS4, not only is the quality of the components scaled down drastically, but the game is ridden with bugs that affect rendering times and completely break the experience in both a gameplay and graphical sense. Crow B Cat made a great video that shows just how bad the game can be in certain places and I highly recommend it. Most low detail games have great materials since they can create them according to the art style rather than to match reality and shaders are usually well suited for each game. That doesn't mean there are no bad materials in low detail games. Pokemon Sword and Shield was criticised for its graphics not being enhanced enough since the series changed from a handheld console to a larger home console. This is not helped by its materials like this tree which has been compared to trees from Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64. From 21 years ago. Above all else, make sure that the materials that you are using for your environment fit the detail level that you plan, and then use different shaders to enhance the effect you created from those materials. There are different forms of lighting in a 3D environment that can be used to illuminate certain areas, cast shadows on others, and change the mood of the environment through a light's colour. Some forms of lighting are spotlights, which cast in all directions from a certain point, directional lights, which target a specific area, or skylights that light in anything that's not enclosed. Effective use of lighting can create a central focus of an environment or make an area visible without making the light feel unnatural. Uses of shadows, on the other hand, achieve the opposite effect. Shadows can allow for parts of an environment to be hidden to either keep something out of focus or to create a feeling of unfamiliarity for the player. Including relievable shadows with lighting creates a nice contrast between light and dark areas and improves the overall look of an environment. Battlefront 2 has a particularly good implementation of lighting and shadows in their Ewok Hunt game mode. In it, you must survive a pitch black night on Endor as you are hunted by Ewoks. The only lights you are provided in this game mode are the very faint torches placed around the map, the flashlights attached to your guns, the light from your laser blaster and flame grenade, and the firefly bombs from the dreaded Ewoks. The utter darkness that surrounds you with faint light sources coming from either allies or enemies creates a perfect horror experience for the player from a game that is usually very fast paced and active. A more peaceful experience brought about from lighting can be found in the recent Genshin Impact from Mihoyo. This game has a similar environment and gameplay style as Breath of the Wild, however the effects of lighting are more noticeable here, while Breath of the Wild focuses on its cell shading. The game's day-night cycle shows two different lighting modes. During the day, the sun emits a bright light on the world that creates shadows from tall overbearing objects such as trees or pillars, while the moon's softer light illuminates the world and leaves fewer shadows to create a more relaxed tone. Mirror's Edge Catalyst created by DICE achieves a similar feeling with its day-night cycle, however the brightly coloured electronic lights of the city reduce the areas of shade and make the environment seem grander. Overall, lighting and shadows are a very important aspect of a 3D environment and can produce a variety of effects from their quantity, uses and different variants.
Sound components are really important in 3D environments as they help create immersion and fill an empty space where there would otherwise be silence. The two main sound components attached to the environment would be sound effects and an ambient soundtrack. Sound effects are usually small sound clips that are played at specific times. This could be from natural causes like weather changes or play interactions such as footsteps or objects colliding. Creating believable sound effects is another way to immerse the player into the environment you have created. An ambient soundtrack is music that plays throughout the environment. The style and tempo of the music can produce different effects and many soundtracks change in certain situations like time and combat. Well produced sound effects are another way of creating immersion of the game world for the player while a soundtrack can change the mood of the environment. Animal Crossing New Horizons took the internet by storm in March of 2020 for its cute and colourful design combined with its mostly peaceful gameplay. The footsteps of your character change depending on what type of ground you are standing on, the sound of the waves hitting the beach is very soothing, the sound of wind blowing is used to indicate a balloon nearby, and the sound of opening doors and talking to your villagers changes depending on your town's theme. These subtle features make the game feel more immersive and more personal knowing that you helped to create these sounds in a way. This is combined with a different song for each of the 24 hours in a day that helps to represent the feeling of being alone at night or relaxing in the afternoon. This creates a level of calmness that cannot be matched by other life simulators. Genshin Impact also has a noticeable soundtrack which features different music depending on what area you are standing in. The regular orchestral soundtrack also changes to a softer piano based version at night time to achieve a similar calming effect. A more intense sound system can be found in Mirror's Edge Catalyst. The heavy impact felt from running across buildings and walls combined with the heavy breathing of the main character and the wind rushing past you helps create a filling feeling for the character when they are going past. The city's ambient sound also helps to build upon the world you are playing in. Making sure a 3D environment has a well designed sound system can help further build upon its immersion and the player's emotions much like lighting can. Animated components of a 3D environment are any part of an environment that moves naturally. This is done to make environments feel livelier and more realistic. Some objects that are usually animated are foliage in the wind, natural wildlife or particle effects. More animated components will make an environment feel more active, while using fewer animated components makes the environment feel lonelier. From the previously mentioned games, some good examples of lively animated components are the grass and creatures from Breath of the Wild, the windmills in Genshin Impact, the ships flying around in Battlefront 2, drones, ships and birds in Mirror's Edge Catalyst, or the foliage and waters from Animal Crossing. Animated components like these are not required for an environment, shown by the original portal developed by Valve, where most of the chambers are set in enclosed white boxes with turrets and moving platforms as the only sources of animation. This helps to cement how isolated you are and immerses you as a lab rat in a testing environment. Using animated components in the right situations can help to build upon the environment's feeling, although creating a dead environment can sometimes be more beneficial to the location. Particle systems are features within a 3D environment that generate images or models that cannot be interactive with and disappear after a certain amount of time. This is used in various ways to create moving elements in an environment such as the burning of fire or falling of rain. A particle system will be made up of the various images slash models that will move and the specifications of the pattern that they will move in. The key to creating a well done particle system are well designed and good looking particles and a natural pattern of their movement in order to make it look believable. There exists a little known game named Air that includes a great particle system. A lot of the game is based around flying through the sky where many clouds are present and can be flown through. Watching these clouds break apart and create a trail behind you is satisfying and the design of how the clouds are broken is clean. Combined with smooth gameplay, the act of flying through the clouds becomes more enjoyable to play and watch. A more detailed game that features a lot of particle effects is the free to play live service MMO FPS Warframe created by Digital Extremes back in 2013. Many of the game's environments and gameplay elements feature a range of different particle effects such as spores, rain or dust. The laboratories on Saturn or the new free roam area on Deimos are full of different types of particles with their own design and movement. This helps immerse the player in the advanced sci-fi setting the game takes place in. 
Creating a meticulous particle system for your environment can build upon the scene greatly and convey themes and moods through how you have designed them. Many environments are built with a physics engine in place. A physics engine will simulate many forms of physics-based actions such as gravity, momentum and collision and apply them to movable objects within an environment and the player. A good engine will simulate physics realistically or to an exaggerated nature based on the design of the environment. A less realistic environment or one based on the moon can include less gravity and more momentum to create a different feeling to reality. The engine should also not include any bugs that could break the physics of the game. Arguably the worst physics engine from a video game comes from Big Rig's Over the Road Racing from Stellar Stone back in 2003. In this truck racing game, most objects have no collision allowing them to be driven through, steep surfaces have zero effect on the vehicle speed allowing you to drive up mountains, and there is no cap on speed when reversing allowing you to drive backwards at thousands of miles an hour. This has led to the game being universally identified as a horrible game. A good physics example would be Fall Guys. Each collision that happens in the game will bounce the objects around, allowing for players to be launched and toppled over with even the smallest of poles or hammers. This leads to an experience that is enjoyable for all to witness. Even smaller games can include some good examples of physics, such as 51 Worldwide Games for the Switch. When playing a tabletop game in handheld mode, simply tilting or shaking the Switch will knock all the pieces off the table for a few seconds. This small attention to detail makes the experience of playing a digital board game feel more real. Overall, a good physics engine will be able to simulate realistic physics to a degree, and environments will use this to achieve believable scenarios. Triggers differ from the other components of an environment as they do not affect the environment by themselves. Instead, triggers are places within a 3D environment that will cause the environment to change once activated by either a player or object within the world. A well-created trigger will be able to achieve its intended effect when required, as well as usually remaining hidden to the player to not break the immersion of the world. However, it is possible to have triggers very obvious to the player to give them information of the near future. A trigger's effect on the other hand should be noticeable by the player and make sense contextually. An example of this would be hitting a box and having it break, or pressing a button to activate a door. Using triggers to achieve different effects can make an environment feel more progressive and realistic, rather than having a single point in time where nothing changes. Overwatch, made by Blizzard in 2016, has some great examples of environmental triggers as the game progresses. In hybrid maps, two teams will have to defend or attack a control point, to then push or stop a payload from reaching certain checkpoints and eventually an endpoint. Each checkpoint advanced will change the environment in some way, whether it's the payload being revealed from behind a door in King's Row, or the payload destroying a door to pass through in Eichenwald. These small changes help to signify progress and are an effective use of triggers. Triggers are especially important in horror games. A grim and unknown environment such as Alien Isolation is perfect for including triggers to scare the player at moment's notice. The fear of the alien swooping in at any moment to kill you is created from how well hidden the game's triggers are and create a perfect horror experience. In conclusion, triggers are optional when only creating an environment, but are perfect for transforming it into a playable and more in-depth medium. When creating materials to add to your environment, you will use a selection of different textures and map types that control a certain element of the material, such as its colour or how it's affected by other components. A texture is a 2D image that is usually in the RGB colour format, and can be used to add colour to a material. A map is different as it controls a set parameter of a material from the way it reacts to light, or adding extra detail on top of the material's textures. As the scale and detail of 3D environments are enhanced over time, more and more textures and map types will appear to help change the look of your model. Here are some common components that surround maps and textures. The main colouring and patterning of a material is a diffuse map. It can be created using a program like Photoshop, or taken from a photograph of a specific real-life texture. This displays the shown image directly onto a material, and will always be used in the making of them. 
Other maps will then be applied to change the structure or colour of the material. A specular map is used by a material to decide where a material will and will not reflect light. This could be used on materials made out of different elements, such as an uncut crystal. It also helps to make materials look more realistic. A glossal roughness map is usually used in combination with a specular map to define the edges of the reflection of a material. A gloss map is the inverse of a roughness map and can be easily changed in most rendering engines. This further builds on the reflection detail of a specular map and builds a more believable material. An albedo map is very similar to a diffuse map in that it will display the main patterning of a material. The difference being the texture will not feature any shadows. This would then be blended into the diffuse map to reduce the amount of shadow a material features. This would be useful when a diffuse map has been too heavily shaded and requires a lighter variant. A metal map will tell a rendering engine to render a specific area as if it was a polished metal. This is done because metal reflects light in a different way to most other materials, and an engine will change the material accordingly to look more realistic. This map is surprisingly useful when creating metal materials. A normal map changes the way lighting affects the colouring of a texture to create bumps in a material without affecting the mesh at all. It is also sometimes referred to as a bump map. This is a great way to add extra detail onto a material with little effort, as normal maps can be created easily through a program like Photoshop with customizable sizes. A displacement map uses the same format of a normal map, using certain colours to determine how elevated certain surfaces are. The difference between this and a normal map is that a displacement map changes the mesh of a material to actually feature higher and lower areas. This makes it more suitable for larger bump sizes such as a rock formation and provides more detail. Emissive colouring is a feature of some rendering engines that allow a material to emit a specific colour and pattern of light. This is especially useful for creating substances that naturally emit light such as a burning log or some form of lamp. It also saves the effort of you having to build the lighting for the material manually by placing lighting components. Opacity maps determine how see-through a certain selection of a material is. These are usually grayscale with white being opaque and black being transparent. This can be used for creating materials like glass or crystal or removing a background of a still image if you need to make some form of image on a material such as an LOD. Physically based shading is a method of rendering a material to reflect light more accurately from it, much like how ray tracing is a more advanced method of projecting light. Instead of using a specular or roughness map, the material will accurately predict how lighting would affect it and sets its parameters automatically. This creates a more realistic looking material and would be great for the hyper-realistic AAA games that are being released today. Ambient occlusion achieves the opposite effect of an albedo map, looking instead to provide more realistic and detailed shading to a material by factoring in other models. This is either done through a map that inverses the albedo map, or a technique using the rendering engine to automatically change the look of different materials, much like physically based shading. Height maps are not used in the creation of textures, but to instead shape terrain like a displacement map. The map would be taken by a landscaping tool such as one in Unreal and create a landscape based off the colour of each pixel on the map. This is a good method of using a map to store other data and alter an environment without a paint tool. A particle texture is a tool that is used to control the spread of each particle in a specific system. This helps to control the look of a particle effect and make it seem more natural by using different colours to represent individual pixels. The result is that a particle effect is more believable, or it was created specifically to achieve a certain effect. A decal texture is a 2D image that is able to be placed over objects in a 3D environment. This happens over any existing materials and can be used to simulate effects such as rust on a perfectly clean metal or blood on a wall. This helps to give objects in a 3D environment more detail and makes these details easier to create. A detail texture is basically a tileable set of maps that are of a low resolution. 
These are then combined with the normal of an actual diffuse or albedo, and scaled down to create a high amount of detail while keeping the colour texture at a lower resolution. This helps to save on space by only including low sized textures while keeping most of a high resolution material intact. Mm. 3D environments will always be a key factor of determining how good a 3D game is. I hope that this guide has given you some understanding of the current components surrounding 3D environments. Over time, the complexity of certain elements such as materials will grow over time, and even more elements and techniques will be discovered and put to great use. Hopefully, newer generations will be able to grasp these techniques and create even more realistic or beautiful environments in the future. It is currently 9 o'clock, the perfect time to be recording things, and I'm ready to read this entire script and not make a single mistake. Yep, completely perfect. And... Realistic, realistic. Human manu makes up and not makes, I didn't know. Some common primitives you may know, may know. Some com... Create an object within a game, it's meant to be in These primitives, I can't find it. Change using a var... This structure... PSG has no real... Combination of the two. Buildings. Buildings? That's not a building. The immersion of a memory to January. A familiar of unfairly. That's a long one. The light from the. Your. Yeah. Perfect horror experience for the. For the. For the play. Are you kidding me? I said footsteps or objects rolling. Rolling. Play into your environment. Into the. Animal Crossing's news. You help create the sound in the. Is in a game will bow. Games can include some good free player to not to break information to the world. Oh, what are they saying? Decide where, where, and where. The texture will not feature any such sh sh the displacement. Yep, me, yep. This, this, this. Um, such as a rock forte fortation. This can be used for creating materials like gut, 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 gut. material actually. Shaped terrain like a displacement. Spread mm -hmm. of each particle in a sp 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 